What is going on, everyone? It is Tyler McKinney I'm back here again, and we're getting into week five breakdowns. I'm going to give you my predictions. Yeah, we are almost halfway through the XFL season. It's kind of crazy, but hey, time flies when you're having fun, and I don't know about you, but I've been really enjoying this league. And Two, to let you know, yes, I will tomorrow night be live streaming. It just seems to be easier that way, so I don't have to try to do a video after the fact because with the 10.30 start three hours later, it's going to be pretty late for this guy. So figure we'll just get it all done with, with one video, and yeah, we'll see how fun it is. And you know, if you would, please join me. Um, you know, Stop in, say hi in the chat. We'll, we'll have some... We'll have some fun throughout it. You know, I don't know. See, see what happens with it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and let's start breaking down these games. And starting with that Thursday game, it's going to be at 1030 Eastern time. We're going to be back in Lumen Field. We've got the undefeated Houston Roughnecks are coming to town to face the Seattle Sea Dragons. Houston's giving three points to the home team. Our over-under is 42 points on this one. This is two offensive juggernauts coming together and I'm hoping that this game is going to be electric. We're going to see two fantastic offenses on display and actually I think we're going to see two fairly decent defenses going up against each other as well in this one. So hold on to your hats, hold on to your seats. I'm hoping that this one's going to be exciting because as the game draws on, this guy's going to be getting tired. And I hope that it keeps it exciting so that I, I can keep the energy up and uh, yeah, we all can have fun together um, spending it online with one another. Now, getting into these rough nets and breaking it down, they really need to get after the quarterback. I, really, with the with that uh, that Jones, June Jones offense, it, it all starts with the quarterback and, and it all starts with Danucci. And Danucci really has the best stats. He's thrown for the most passing yards um, in, in the league so far, but guess what? He also has thrown the most interceptions. And so I think if they can get him flustered, they can get him you know out of the pocket. He does a really good job when he is improvising, but he also makes a lot of mistakes when he is doing that and if they can get after them they can allow that really nice defensive backfield uh to to really ball hawk and get after things so i really think that um them putting pressure on the offense is really key for them because i don't really feel like they're they're going to th this is not an offense where i feel like they're going to be able to stifle them and, and really stop them the way that they're going to stop this offense is, is by creating turnovers and making them make make mistakes now the second thing is is they need to limit the uh, turnovers on their side of things. Uh, you know, I, I will say Brandon Silvers has done fairly well. I've been really actually pleasantly surprised with him this year. And, and he's starting to turn into one of these guys that I'm kind of like, like, like I, I like his, his moxie about him. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's that Texas feel. I, the way that he kind of talks. I mean, I, I don't know. He just reminds me of, uh, he reminds me of Troy Aikman back when I was a little kid. Um, <laughs> You know, a long time Cowboys fan. My dad was a Cowboys fan, and then so I kind of just inherited it. And with the big three there in Dallas with Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, and Michael Irvin, it just Silver's just for whatever reason has that feel for me right now. I've always I've I've said this multiple times. I haven't really been a fan until this season. He's really kind of changed my mind about things. And really, I think he's kind of finally found an offense where he actually fits. Um, and and he looks really really good in in that Houston, um, you know, in that, in that Mike Leach uh, offense there. But he needs to limit his turnovers. He's still a gunslinger, and he's still a guy that that tries to force some things. And two, if you notice throughout games, they have these spurts where, where th the wheels don't come off, but, but things kind of start to take place that they, they, you know, the other team starts to have these rallies. Now they always seem to fix it and weather the storm, but there seems to be a storm somewhere throughout the game. And I think that they need to limit that because this Seattle team is a, is a team that's very, very potent and, and that can, can take advantage of that storm and, and, and really go with it to where, 
you know, if if this is a close game and Houston has one of one of those kind of bits that they go through, Seattle will take this thing and run with it and and not look back. And the third thing is, is like I've always said, they just need to do what they do. They've been doing a fantastic job and and they've been progressing things as the weeks go on. You know, it was a trick play. It was really cool, but that was designed that play was set up perfectly the way that they did it. This was not just something that, you know, they kind of, you know, pulled out as like a last minute thing, you know, trying to trick everybody. This offense is, is really starting to click. And obviously they not only do they have Brandon Silver's, running the quarterback and they've got a really nice system. They have a lot of really nice pieces on the offense defensive side too. I mean, they, they are just loaded with talent all the way around and, and they, they've got a lot of guys that really fit where, where they need to, um, in this thing, but they just need to keep doing their thing. If they do their thing, they're going to come out of this with a win. They're probably going to give up more points than what they have been, but then this will be a closer game than what they've been expecting. Uh, you know what they been, what we've seen so far. Um, but if they do what they do, they're going to come out with a w- with a win in this one. Now, looking at the Dragons, this Dragons team is going to be a home. Their home favorite, you know, they're well, they're underdog, but you know, they're they're the hometown's favorites here. The, Seattle, they love this Dragons team, and I think that hopefully, if we can get some decent weather come tomorrow night, they'll show out for this team, and you know, that crowd will really get things going, and they'll really be behind this team, and this team can really feed off of them. But really, they need to just limit limit the turnovers, not fumble the ball. Danucci needs to figure out how to figure that whole thing out and, and not make stupid decisions at the end of the game. I'm you're up. The game's won. Do not throw the ball like you did and throw an interception against this Houston roughnecks team. You can't have that. It doesn't matter what you, what you say, what you think you, you really this is one of those games where Danucci needs to uh, play, just play not so much emotionally intact, but 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 play a little bit more with it, you know, from his head and and and, and know, knowing what he has there. Limit turnovers. The the you know so don't fumble the ball. Danucci needs to take a better better care of the ball period. And, you know, when he's running around doing his, you know, doing his thing, you know, take care of the ball. Second thing is not throw interceptions. Uh, pretty much if, if, if you're seeing kind of a pattern here, what I'm talking about, it's the He, he is, he is the guy who has thrown for almost 200 more yards in the league than everybody else. Uh, he, he is a he is is a good quarterback. He's got a great completion percentage. His problem is is that at times he gets a little too careless and takes op, takes shots when he shouldn't. And and sometimes it comes to bite him in the rear end and that's what has. So he right now can be he, I, I I hate to say this, but like in their first couple games, he could be the difference between them winning this game and losing this game because he does something that he shouldn't do. That's just just the reality of it here. That a lot of that falls and and really a lot of those first two losses fall on his shoulders. I, I don't mean mean it mean, but that's just the truth here. The reality is is we could be having two undefeated teams playing each other right now if it weren't for the mistakes that he's made. But he knows that he understands that, and you can see that. Um, but you would at least. It's one thing to realize it after the fact and try to work towards it. It's another to actually recognize it and apply that in a game. And we haven't really completely seen him apply that in the game. So hopefully we see that because against this team, this Houston team, they give them a chance. They will jump all over it. Because remember, this is this Houston team. They're number one in sacks. They're number, you know, they're number one in takeaways. This is a ridiculously good defense. 
Uh, that aside, though, the second thing that they need to do is they, they need to score. They really need to get Josh Gordon going early. It seems like at the end of the game is when Josh Gordon shines. They, they throw the ball up to him. He makes a great catch. You know, he shows his athleticism. They need to do that earlier, and they need to get things going earlier. The reality of this team is is that it's, it's the number one um, you know, total yards offense, but when it actually comes to scoring touchdowns, they're they're back down in like fourth or fifth place when it comes to actual touchdowns. They really need to figure out how to punch that ball in the end zone because I can tell you the Roughnecks are going to do that. The Roughnecks know how to score and they know how to score fast. This Seattle team, they know how to get yards, they know how to get them fast, but when they get down to where they need to score. It doesn't happen, whether it be turnovers, field goals, missed field goals, what wh- whatever it be. There, there seems to be something that stalls out this offense. They need to not stall out. They need to score, and 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 they need to go. And they have the stars to do it. I mean, you know, you look across that board. You've got you've got Pearson. You've got you've got Gordon. You've got Ellison running the ball. I mean. <sighs> just the the list just kind of I mean it goes on of of guys I mean I can the top two guys in the league for receiving yards are Josh Gordon and and Pearson and then you've got Blake Jackson who's also been coming up I mean I'm just just going off and not to mention that you've got a guy in Ellison who's really been picking things up in the run game and I really like what they've been doing with him pounding the ball with him and and getting him involved in that I think that that's going to be huge for them the other thing is that this defense needs to be aggressive this is a this is one of those things where you're like you know to stop the other offense we need to be smart you know we need we need we need to play smart defense you know we we need to make sure that we're you know we're we're home where we need to not break our assignments this is not that case you need to come after them come after silvers make silvers make mistakes um you know you need to create opportunities for your uh, for your defense to get the ball so they can get the ball back to their offense and score. This is more like a track meet style thing than, than this is to be, you know, a chess match back and forth. That's not going to be where, you know, you're trying to outscore this Houston team. That's kind of the way that I look at it and they're built to do it. So I don't really think that, 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 that can't happen. I, I think that this is a team, you know, I'm just, just kind of, these two teams are built fairly similar and and a lot of it has to do with you know one's been playing more disciplined than than the uh, than the other has now i will say that you know on defensive side of things it's going to be cool to watch that defensive secondary against uh in for the roughnets against that that um that wide receiver core for the um uh, for the dragons, it's going to be neat. That's going to be exciting. I mean, I've been going on about this. Like you can tell I'm excited about this game. I think that unfortunately, I think that the roughnecks are going to pull this one out. I think it's going to be a, a, a close game. I would say it's about a 29, 25. Um, so I, I would, I would take, I would give the points, go with the roughnecks and definitely go with the over in this game. But as you can tell, I'm excited. We can talk more about it tomorrow during the game. Now, moving on to Saturday's game. This game's in a 7 p.m. Eastern game. This one's going to be back in the dome. They're in St. Louis. They're going to have a rocking crowd. This is a revenge game. St. Louis wants to get revenge for their only loss, their only blemish on the season. They want to bring the magic back, get that back from D.C., what they stole from them and take the take take the top crown in the um in the north. The reality of it is 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 this game puts them right back in the top of the north uh, again. And these two teams are, you know, this is this is going to be a slugfest. This one's going to be fun. I'm I'm excited to see how many people they can pack in those stands on on Saturday night. Um, this game has the hometowns actually getting one and a half points here, and the um, over under is forty two. And I was kind of a little surprised by that at first, and then I'm starting to look at these scores that these teams have had, and I'm like, oh yeah, these teams have actually. Um, you know, they're, they're actually scoring and 
I don't know if you've noticed this, but I've noticed that the that the over unders have been creeping up, and I wouldn't. I mean, we get to like week eight. I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing like 46, 48 in some of these because I, the offenses are now starting to kind of catch up with the defenses, and it's been kind of cool because you're starting to see them evolve as they're going and. That brings me now to my keys to the game, the defenders. They need to keep this offense wide open, and they need to open it up early. I think what they've been doing with Te'amu and and letting him sling the ball around the field has done wonders for them. Him using his legs, the way that he has running with passion, running with a purpose, has really re reignited this team um and and it's really gotten them the ability to get up early now you know they'll get down towards the end zone they'll they'll bring in um they'll bring in king and switch things up which is totally fine with me but what they're doing is is that that offense is opened up to where they can do that and then it turns into where they can do pound the ball so if they can get up early and then and then go ahead and and run the ball, uh, they're not going to look back. They're, they're going to have a nice, easy win if, if all they need to do in the second half is just really just pound the rock, pound the rock, pound the rock, pound the rock. I think that, you know, that'll be a, this will be a nice night for them, and they'll quiet that crowd real, real quick, especially if they can slow this game down. Um, the, the, the big thing on defense for them is they need to stop Butler. If you've been – the defense r- really needs to stop this this – you know, this Battle Hawks offense that's kind of figured things out. But if you've been paying any attention to it, Butler has had a touchdown, a nice touchdown catch in each one of the games. Butler has really come on as kind of like this deep threat guy. Um, you know, they've got they've got other guys uh, you know around them. I'm not going to you know, take it away from, from any, anybody else. I mean, they've got Shepard. Shepard's another guy you got to watch for it. He's been really, really coming on for them the past couple of weeks. Obviously Austin Pro is a go-to guy for them, but Butler is kind of that, that X factor that they've been using. And I think if they can take him away, I think that really takes away one of the weapons from AJ McCarron and the, and that, and that offense there. So I, I think that that defender's defense has the ability to do that. They're you know they're 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 right behind Houston when it comes to takeaways. When it when it comes to that type of a thing, so if they can if 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 they can cause some havoc around AJ McCarron, I think that they, that they could you know they could get some stuff done. And if they can if they can cover up Butler, uh, McCarron's going to have a rough a, a rough day. That's just kind of my thoughts. Now, moving over to the keys of the game for the Battle Hawks, they need to start off fast. They've been doing a fantastic job with their offense of getting it going early. And, the, you know, really, last game really just kind of, you know, says says it all for me. The way that they came out, the way that they played, they need to feed off of this, feed again off of this, this crowd. They're going to have another amazing crowd there. This place is going to be packed. They're going to be roaring because they remember what happened to them in D.C., and they're going to flip the script on this one. And I think that the Battle Hawks need to lean into that. They need to lean into this revenge game. They need to play it like a college football. You know, this is a rivalry game. We've got a rival home, you know, we've got a rival coming into town, coming into our house. They're not going to come into our house. They're not going to do that to us. Um, AJ McCarron, listen, the guy played at Alabama. He knows all about that with the Iron Bowl. He, he, he needs to lead this team like that. This needs it's going to have a college type of a feel with that crowd the way they're going to be and and they they really need to just feed off of that and start early come come at them hard, come at them fast. Grakowski, Grakowski. Um uh <clears throat> yes. So, the offensive coordinator. He needs to come he 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 needs to keep doing what he's been doing with this offense. I think it's been fantastic. If you've been watching the evolution of this offense, they need to keep really e- evolving. Um, and and a lot of that has to do with the run game with Hill. They, they finally figured out how to run with Hill, and their offense has kind of been opening up with with the pass game and then coming back with the run. And if you noticed, I, I've said this before, but you watch, it's it's not a straight ahead running where where everybody's ca- catching a man. Everybody knows who who they're you know who they're blocking. They're kind of blocking a zone. So as they're coming out, and you know, part of this is part of the RPO, you know, type of a thing, you know, but but 
you know, they're, they're kind of running and gashing and Hill does a really, really nice job of, of seeing the holes and kind of running vertically, vertically and horizontally kind of at the same time and hitting those. He's, he's really good at, 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 at flowing, hitting the gap and then getting up and, and, and collecting some decent yards. And, but they've been also giving him the ability to kind of get to that second level. He is, he is a guy that once he gets going, he, he does a really good job of, of running the ball. And I think that they can continue to, to, to do that. Um, this, this team, the defense for this team, if they can keep, if, if they can really start fast, you know, keep, keep going with the offense, evolving this offense, doing that and stop the run. The, the defense really, this is the battle Hawks defense has actually been a, they've been a bend don't break type of defense. If, if you look at kind of their defensive stats, they're not the greatest in, in everything, but what they are doing is keeping their team in the games and, and giving their, their, their offense opportunities. I, this game is all about the run for the defenders. If they can stop the run for the defenders, the Battle Hawks, I think, will win this game. If if they can if they can figure out how to shut down that run and make them actually have to pass, um, I I don't know if they're completely there with Tayamu and and the rest of the crew to where if they have to rely on completely on their pass if, if they're there yet. What's been happening is is that that the threat of running, the quarterback run and and the running backs pounding the ball, but that threat there has really opened up the passing game whereas with you know where if that gets shut down them having to open things up with the pass, it changes everything. And if so, if that Battle Hawks team can just really disrupt that run game, th- that's going to bode well for them. They do, like I said, they do a good job of, of like Ben don't break, but they can't let that team run all over them. Um, but I, I think that they'll feed right off of this crowd. They'll, this will be a rock and crowd. It'll be great. They'll be in for it. Um, this game is going to, uh, I'm, I'm giving it to the battle Hawks. I think that they're going to feed right off of that whole revenge factor. I think that it's going to be, um, it, it, it's going to be one to where I don't think that it's going to be like a slaughter or anything like that, but I think that they'll score in the fourth quarter and then that'll kind of put them comfort- comfortably, uh, put things comfortably away because I don't think the defenders will be able to, to, you know, really rely on the pass to really get them where they need to go. And I think it's like a 27, 18 type of game. So definitely going to go with the over here, but, um, but also kind of, um, you know, I, I think I'm going to, I would take the points and go with the battle Hawks to w- and win straight out. I think they're going to have a nice win. I think they're going to even it up there in the North. So those are my thoughts on the first two games of the weekend. We'll get to the other games in um, another video. And two, if you get a chance tomorrow night, come on out, let's hang out together and let's watch some football. All right, guys, listen, I know that you're busy and I know that I'm busy. So let's get on out of here. You have a good night and bye.